Uh, well, um, what I'm going to uh, present today is just a small part of a project that actually um, was somehow already ended uh, several years ago. And um, uh, this project, uh, or the main aim of this project at its time, uh, was um, an analysis uh, of um, a, a transformation of personal base or personal structure of the scientific community in Bohemia and Moravia during the period of uh, German occupation, National Socialism, and of course, Final Solution Holocaust. Um, at its time, uh, we were very happy that this uh, particular project was supported by the Rothschild Foundation Europe, and Paul helped us very much at the very beginning with a letter of recommendation, and so on, and so on. So um, there is already uh, one book uh, that appeared. It's a, uh, just output of this project. It was published in English in 2013. And the idea was just uh, uh, to collect for the first time, for the very first time after 70, uh, well, 70 years after the end of the Second World War, in our case, the uh, relevant biographies of outstanding men and women of science that were connected uh, to Bohemia and Moravia. Um, of course, scientists and scholars, that means that we have included uh, both scientists, um, persons who were active in technology, and inventors as well. That's just for the rough uh, 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 selection we did. And this particular book was dedicated, well, at the end of uh, uh, this uh, 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 project, uh, we publish a book uh, that uh, contains uh, 46 biographies. And these are, we then made a, a little bit shorter uh, selection, and these are just professors and associate professors. So it's a relevant uh, number anyway for a uh, further prosopographical uh, uh, evaluation anyway. If I can make it much more broader, uh, this year should appear another book in, actually only in Czech, which contains all victims, direct victims, uh, from this particular field of science from Bohemia and Moravia. The total number is 190 persons, including all the scientists and scholars uh, despite of their nationality, language, religion, and so on. So in this context, the scientists and scholars of Jewish origin just represent about one-fourth of all direct victims. That means those who were killed or died in consequence of the Nazi persecution of the scientific community in Bohemia and Moravia. So the total number is 190 persons, and the Jewish victims just 46. Um, just a brief overview of a very complicated and long history that is uh, just connected with the development of the scientific infrastructure in uh, what is today the Czech Republic, historically the so-called historical lands of Bohemia, Moravia, and Austria and Silesia. Uh, it's just the development of uh, both the academic institutions and the scientific institutions as the academies of science and arts. As you can see, uh, the uh, uh, quite important year is just 1945, the end of the Second World War, and it's the year when actually the German-speaking spe tradition that was much uh, uh, very much connected just with the uh, Jewish uh, population ended. Um, the institution I am going to uh, highlight just uh, now is, of course, the uh, most uh, uh, prestige university, uh, the oldest university uh, beyond the Alps, founded in 1348 by the Emperor Charles uh, IV, uh, uh, Charles 
or Caroline University uh, placed in Prague. Uh, again, complicated history, but what we uh, keep, uh, uh, should keep in mind is that in 1882, it was divided in two parts, the German and Czech, uh, and uh, what I'm going uh, to talk about is actually the German Faculty of Medicine that was since 1919, 20, uh, 20 a part of the so-called German University. And in this version just existed until the German occupation of Bohemia and Moravia in 1939. Um, again, quite a complicated history, but at uh, least you see here uh, the uh, situation after the Munich Agreement from September 1938 and uh, then the March occupation of the rest of Bohemia and Moravia, 1939. The, just uh, uh, brief information, the total uh, population of protectorate was about 7,400,000 people, uh, or inhabitants, of course. So uh, just some general information about the German Faculty of Medicine, or the Faculty of Medicine at the German University in Prague. Uh, it was a very traditional and important center, both of practical and theoretical medicine, just because uh, until 1918, there were only two faculties uh, of medicine uh, in the whole land. Uh, then in 1918, or after the establishment of Czechoslovakia, uh, there were established two more faculties in Brno and Bratislava. Um, of course, uh, still, there were very close ties between Prague and Vienna and, and other German uh, universities. Here you can see just some uh, numbers uh, uh, that uh, concern the students in the 1930s. The, uh, some uh, statistics, of course, curriculum for the year 1938. Um, what could be interesting information is just a fact that after 1918, the Czechoslovak Ministry of Education and National Enlightenment just even seemed to implement probably a very special sort of personal policy in that way that just the academics in this field of medicine uh, of Jewish origin should be just placed uh, uh, or affiliated at the German uh, Faculty of Medicine. Uh, for example, at uh, the Czech Faculty of Medicine in Prague, we uh, uh, have found out only two victims then of the Holocaust, and there was, for example, no uh, professor or associate professor of Jewish origin at the newly established Faculty of Medicine in Brno. Um, of course, the rise of the Nazism <coughs> in the 1930s led at the Prague German University that was just held as a pressure uh, of the German culture just because of this all and very old tradition to a clear radicalization and polarization even at the faculty of uh, medicine. So you have, of course, some pro-Nazi groups. Surprisingly, these were uh, mainly uh, 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 just uh, been established around some older professors. So now the young or younger generation of the German scholars, but quite uh, old professors. Here, again, complicated history. Uh, what happened uh, and what was the background of the, uh, of, uh, the process of uh, the dismissals, the purification, or in German, Reinigung, uh, in the month immediately that followed, immediately after the Munich Agreement. Two important points are, first, uh, the process just took only two, three months uh, since uh, the Munich Agreement and the final dismissals of uh, the uh, Jewish scholars. Uh, the second important aspect is that actually still in this time, or at this time, the uh, German University, including the Faculty of Medicine, was officially not a German um, uh, institution obligated to the Reich Ministry of Education. It was a Czechoslovak institution, but thanks to in 
informal pressure, political pressure, as you can see here in the quotation, it became a number one of the German interest between September 1938 and uh, uh, March 39 with a clear goal. Uh, the Jewish professor, as was a title of uh, 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 press coverage in British newspaper, the Jewish professors need to go. <coughs> Here some contemporary cover press coverage from uh, local German uh, uh, press, actually, uh, from March uh, 1939. Of course, uh, several other processes uh, were parallel to this development. For example, after the Munich Agreement, an, an enormous anti-Semitic propaganda occurred even at the Czech side. Uh, here again, some contemporary German drawing about the Karolinum, the center of uh, or the rectorate of the Prague University that are just belonging to the new power or should belong to the new power. Of course, this is one very significant uh, paper uh, or picture uh, that uh, is related with the medical profession. Um, so first, just an overview of the emigration. Uh, as I told you, until the end of January uh, 1939, all the Jewish professors should leave uh, the faculty. So here you can see uh, the numbers, uh, the disciplines, and the average age, both of the professors and associate professors. A uh, vast majority of these academics of course, emigrated in, if they could, they emigrated in 1939, mostly until September 1939. They settled just in Europe, North and South America, Africa, Middle East, and Australia. Uh, we have, of course, some cases of the so-called failed emigration. That is actually, uh, these are the cases when, for the first time, the persons were able to emigrate, but then, were uh, catch uh, in another European country, just occupied by the Nazis. Um, yeah, and uh, 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 sorry, these are the double immigrants, and then you have also the failed immigration. Um, yeah, I know. Uh, the result of this development of uh, nine of the month uh, between the Munich of the month between the Munich Agreement and German occupation and the beginning of the war is that of course in these decisive months the people the professors associate professors professionals needed to uh, uh, decide what to do extremely hard vital decision. Those who uh, left were just the immigrants. Those who stayed became mostly the victims of Holocaust. Again, the total numbers and the causes of death and the places of death, uh, the, average, uh, the average age, just imagine what of kind of decision it was probably to make this such decision at the age, for example, of 66 year, years. And then an interesting number that actually the murderer or forcibly died professors and associate professors just of this faculty of medicine, if we compare it with the rest of the victims, represents 28% of all direct victims among the scientists and scholars of Jewish origin from Bohemia and Moravia. Uh, here is just a relevant slide in Czech. I'm sorry for that because I'm not an expert in producing graphics. Anyway, uh, here you can see, here you can see just uh, the proportion among the branches of science. This is this uh, graphics on the right side. You know, so this is the medicine. Then the second most relevant uh, 
portion uh, where the, the mathematicians and then another branches of science. Uh, so, so, short conclusion, uh, as you can see, uh, the clean-up operation, the so-called Re Reinigungsaktion, as it was called by the German decision makers, fin was finished in May 1939. It was the largest intervention in the prison structure of the academic community in Bohemia and Moravia before the shutting down of all Czech universities in November 1939 with clearly disruptive consequences. We can observe here a concurrence of several parallel processes as it, it was mentioned, emigration and so on. The average age is given here once more, countries, uh, the hard uh, decision and the significant number of those who stay. Uh, 70 years after the faces are displayed. <coughs> Thank you very much.